What's up Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another reaction video. Today we are going to be reacting to a video that I'm really really excited to see because it's been hyped up for so long, no pun intended. This is Hyperdroid. I solved FNAF's biggest mystery and uh, it's about the survival logbook. Now the reason I've been excited for this is because if you have been looking at Twitter, Hyperdroid has claimed that he has solved the Foxy Grid and I, I, I'm i really excited to hear this because genuinely the Foxy Grid is like one of the biggest things right now in the franchise that is just has just gone completely unsolved. I don't think it fits into anything else that we've seen and we don't know how to solve it. There's also random tally marks that's in the survival logbook. It could be connected to tally marks that are in security breach, but that's like, we don't know how. Uh, it's it, there, There's just so much in the survival logbook which we still kind of question about and it's good to go back every now and then with, um, with like a new look and with new lore and stuff like that. So I think, we're gonna get straight into this. Uh, I'm really excited because I, I really like Hyperdroid's videos. I like his editing. Uh, when we've talked in the past, I think um, we've had very similar opinions. So maybe I will believe him, maybe I will not. Let's have a look at what he has to say. Bam. FNAF Survival Logbook released six years ago and contained puzzles to get the six two years. names of the most important characters. Wow. The fifth missing child that possesses Golden Freddy, who some theorize to be the one you should not have killed, and the crying yeah. child, whose importance in this story is still debated to this day. Today, I am here to announce that I think I might have solved it. Seriously, we're not wasting any more time, so please subscribe and turn on notifications. Okay, getting straight into it. I win the biggest FNAF video okay. ever, over 24 hours long and a whole year in the making yeah this is insane man this is insane FNAF the supreme guide releases in just a few weeks i don't know when this video comes cool. out as i'm saying this and let's get into it although before we begin a giant disclaimer that this is just a theory feel completely free to disagree of course, with me and not of take course. these possible answers at all i just happen to get the solution disagree respectively as well and, and in well, the comments so too if i say share. anything this is just a theory please let's keep this community positive anyways let me catch you yeah up quick. so okay. shortly after fnaf 6 released and seemingly ended the original story, the survival logbook released. Itself yeah. being basically a children's activity book containing things like quizzes, would you rather's, drawing grids, etc. However, on the I'll be honest, it's one of my favourite things in the, was in the series. by Michael Afton himself. And so we knew we were in for some lore reveals. Mike notes that his recent dreams are of Nightmare Fredbear. Hang on a second. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I'm very, very small. I, I'm literally like two pixels, but I'm right behind Raitos and Funaf. That's incredible. Thank you, Hyperdroid, for including me there. <laughs> I have actually changed my logo now, so this this video is technically outdated, but but it's fine. You, it, it was the intent that counts. <laughs> and with all the FNAF 3 imagery and the fact Clara quote unquote burned down the house, seemingly yeah. hinting that he's indeed the FNAF 3 guide as well. Even having a real value code, which proves that the book takes place in modern times. Oh, okay. However, that's not all. Throughout this log book, we also learn of two other spirits inhabiting the book, whether literally or not. One writing in faded text to someone else, altering the text. Writing multiple times throughout things yeah, like- Yeah, they're, they're talking to each name, other essentially. Who are you and what's your name? hinting that we're meant to get the names of these two spirits within the logbook. Very yeah. quickly we discovered that one spirit is the crying child, hinted at via the does he still talk to you text next to the Fredbear plush as well as other hints, and that the other was the fifth missing child who possesses Golden Freddy, hinted at via the- And we found by the word such that that was Cassidy. Faded ...only a few weeks after we got the final FNAF game, with an ending literally containing a name hidden on a gravestone for the fifth missing child. Fast forward to June 4th, and MatPat released a game theory about the logbook. Asking us to help him solve this. I remember this. Providing this is really exciting. The logbook are either in the wrong places or noted in red yeah. as important. Those being 52, 39, 15, 7 and 2. Grabbing the new numbers from the chalkboard 5 plus 4 for 9 and the 3, 10 and 11, and finally 8, 11. Then later that same day on the Game Theory subreddit, user DPowerful1 figured out... This is insane. This is completely the insane. Grid ...instead of the Foxy Grid. Giving us 5 across, 2 down for C. It's so convoluted. A, one across, five down for S, seven across, two down for S, nine across, three down for I, ten across, eleven down for D, and finally eight across. I'm going to stop here because I, I, absolutely, that's that's how we got the name Cassidy in the book, uh, and and I I do I haven't really thought about it that much, but I do actually agree with you that we are supposed to get two names from the logbook 
because there are two victims and, and they keep kind of talking about do you remember your name and what is your name? It's me, like blah, 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 blah. And it's it's theorized that these are the two spirits that possess Golden Freddy, um, the crying child and Cassidy. Uh, we found Cassidy's name. And, and the reason I've paused here is because I think we actually, um, a while ago, there was a theory that went around. I think this was when The Real Jake came out. So when the fifth book or sixth book, sixth book, Blackbird of Phasma Frights came out, um, basically somebody looked through the logbook, they they got all the tally marks that I was talking about before, and they managed to get the name Evan, but it was a little bit like stretchy, right? I think the E, V and A made complete sense. I think it was very logical, but then the way that we got to the N was a little less logical. So it, it kind of, it was inconsistent, so it wasn't really a fully fledged theory. I'm interested to see if Hyperjoid is able to do something similar here, but not have that stretch at the end. Let's see. Cassidy, the name of the Golden Freddy spirit. Finally, it was solved. However, that then left the Foxy Grid unfinished and there's clearly something there with the faded out ABC on the top yeah. left. Yes, no, you later, cannot deny that. Duo on Reddit, Godzilla and Wolfie shared their joint attempt at it. Some of Cassidy's questions to Crying Chad were not responded to, but there were a few that actually were. Does he still talk to you was responded with, I can hear sounds. The party was for you was responded to with, it was for me. What do you see was responded to, I can't see. Which using the page numbers for the questions got 75, 103 and 59. Which in putting it into the Foxy Grid gave us 7 across 5 down to get E, 10 across okay, 3 down yeah, to get sorry, B, I've... 5 across nine down to get a then finally they predicted that the random tally marks throughout were to be used to get the final letter totaling to 47 it would have been and n, the letter yes. four across and seven down n to create the name Evan. but yeah however just yeah. like matt pat said in his video despite not being a bad theory or anything the method does end up breaking on the fourth letter yeah. and they end up yeah. using an entirely separate system to get it this is what i'm talking about like yeah one thing to do as for cassidy was using the specifically marked numbers throughout aka only using one method this then led the community to collectively wave the white flag and quite honestly give up a lot of people yeah. like me not yeah. even trying to go back at it in the future because we felt like everything was already tried this has allowed the puzzle to remain unsolved for six years and therefore the crying child has gone unnamed for nine whole years this is where i come nine years Last that's, year, that's I, crazy along with some friends tried solving the foxy grid in the logbook and okay one of my copies for the logbook had what seemed to be an f 10 down which the only way to get that was to have the grid be 15 by 15 instead which the numbers do fade out completely at 15. however after checking a few more copies it turns out it hardly even exists there and is very faded out to the point that no one else has really gotten it leading me to the conclusion that it's actually just a part of the background image of the same color and just so happens to fit a box by coincidence I then tried to reverse engineer getting Garrett, which is assumedly the crying child okay. Standon's name in the movie, like yeah. Abby is for Elizabeth, but I couldn't find a solution either. I then wrote in my Supreme Guide script that one day I may come back to it and try to solve it. Anyways, it's been a whole year since I wrote that, because that video turned extremely massive, and so I returned to the logbook recently. This time, I decided to do what I've done here and go back through the old solutions, seeing if we missed anything, and it always ticked me that the three letters E, V, and A seem to work perfectly fine. But yeah. the fourth just yeah. doesn't. The method of using the pages that cast There must be something there. That are the only ones in the whole book to actually get replied to makes so much sense to me. She asks a lot of questions, yet only three get replied to, so surely that means something. Also, notice how the numbers begin fading at 10 and are fully gone by 15, meaning that the only necessary rows are actually the first nine, which just happens to fit every single coordinate for EVA. Yeah, yeah, then okay. Then it hit me. Something altered right in the logbook is I'm scared, which in the past was linked. I, I I think I've I think I've come to a lead. Um, I so or not necessarily a lead, right? But E V A, right? It it doesn't necessarily have to be that order. As Hyperdroid was saying, um, the way that we got the letters E V and A were by kind of I think. I, I recall it as well, actually, now um, looking back at it, is we took the questions and the answers to those questions and got those page numbers and that was your coordinates almost or, or whatever, however it worked. Um, but there was no way to know if it was actually E and then V and then A. It could have been 
V-A-E. Where, where that gets me, I have no idea. Um, but like, it doesn't necessarily have to be Eva and then another letter. It can be like, it, there could be something before the E, there could be something in between the E and the V or something like, it, it doesn't have to be that order, if you know what I mean. Um, so I wonder if that's where he's gonna go with this. Let's continue. To the tally marks for some reason, but what if instead it actually links back to Cassidy asking do you still have dreams? Right above a picture of the nightmares, who we heavily theorized crying child would have seen at some point. A stretch and that was one of the questions that how wasn't I can hear sounds wait. which link back to E, it was for me which link back to V, and I can't see which link back to A, which are also all yeah. answers to Cassidy's questions, all happen to so come then the other same question end of night quizzes together, including I'm scared. Also an answer to one of the questions. Oh yeah, It yeah. would be weird for three of the only four answers to True. matter, right? So what happens when you use the page number of the question, 41, for four across on the first row in the Foxy grid? You get, oh, D. Well, great, another failed attempt that literally just says Evad, which oh, isn't a real name, backwards. right? Yes, right, it's that Dave. not a real name. So I went back through the book to right? look for any more hints, and oh. I noticed that throughout the book, a certain word keeps coming up. After each night's work, we ask that you take a moment for self-reflection. Reflect on the things in life that you are most thankful for. And then the mirror the reflects, life, yeah. Reflect on the meaning of your dreams. And a bunch more activities, all to do with reflecting on your life, looking back on things, a bunch of self-reflection quizzes, as well as a giant yeah. damn mirror, which is where Cassidy asks the crying child, what do you see? And he's on the direct opposite. Yeah, it, it seems like Cassidy's on the left. Name. Crying child in the right. This up? Well, it got me thinking about the solution I got, and what happens when you put a word in a mirror reflection? It goes back to front, and the word oh. is reversed. So, what would happen when you put E V A D into a mirror? It turns into D A V E. Standing ovation. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense. <laughs> okay, so if I'm right in thinking this, so what Hyperdroid is saying is that. All of those years back, was it like four or five now? I think it was back in 2020, if my mind is serving me correctly. Um, all that time ago, we had we had these three letters that were perfectly um, solved, essentially, but then we couldn't quite get the last letter. I wonder, I wonder if we look back at that Reddit post, if they did actually get D, but they didn't figure out this reflection thing. That would be really interesting. That's a really cool solution, if it's true. Um, <laughs> like Scott Cawthon has outdone himself, if that is, if that is the solution. And I can't believe that that all that time ago we were so close. You know what I mean? Um, so Dave Afton, what does that what does that mean? So mul uh, there have been multiple Daves in in the FNAF franchise, there's Dave Miller, who is William Afton in the original trilogy. There's also a Dave in Security Breach uh, in one of the duffel bag messages. And I think there's also a few Daves in in the Fazbear Frights and Tales on the Pizza Plex books. I would need to go back to look through. It's not one of the protagonists, but I think there are a few side characters. So basically what I'm saying is like, a while ago when we had Evan, when we got to Evan, um, we 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 thought like yeah, it has it has to be Evan, right? Because we keep seeing the name Evan come up in the Fazbear Frights books, but I think that was a little bit inaccurate and maybe a coincidence. Um, but then Dave, Dave is an important name. Dave Afton, Michael Afton, Elizabeth Afton. Does that make sense? I guess so. Like <laughs> there's there's no way for me to confirm or deny, but I think the methodology there does work. Let's continue to hear what Hyperdroid has to say. I can't believe there's still 10 minutes of this video left. Let's get through it. Dave, the crying child's real name. These two pages right next to each other give us the answers to both names and a full conversation. Actually makes sense. Who are you? It's me, Cassidy. What is your name? What do you see? Dave. All of the questions crying Ooh. child later answers have bloodstains. This is very convincing. All of the answers come from the I like how, how, how this is scripted. All of the reflection stuff hints at reflecting something and the two names are both solved 
resolved directly next to each other. To me, this seems pretty solid. Unlike Evan, this code doesn't break the method for the final letter. Yeah. And actually remains consistent yeah. for each. It has to be, right? It has to be. We get from the crying child that was seemingly responding to nothing, and it also makes use of the constant reminding to reflect throughout the book. I know some will have an issue with I'm scared being an answer for do you still have dreams, but the fact that it's specifically above the image of nightmare, which Mike himself categorizes as a dream, and the fact that none of the other questions are even somewhat possible to be the question he's responding to, it seems to be the right one. But wait, haven't we heard the I name guess. Dave somewhere else before? Yes, we have. Multiple times, actually. Going release order and in the Silver Eyes, a book which Dave is released Miller. directly after FNAF 4. William Afton uses a disguise to hide from the public that he's the same guy. Yeah. This disguise being Dave Miller. But why did he pick Dave? Well, we actually learn in the Silver Eyes that something Good question. the murders Good happened question. at Fred Bear's family diner. Quote, they were together, just the two of them. And it must have been before everything, before Fred Bear's went wrong before anyone was dead. Then throughout the uh. series, we're reminded that the murders all happened at Freddy's and Charlie slash Sammy was kidnapped at an unspecified place. So whatever happened at Fred Bear's was a separate event that was bad and bad enough to cause the location to close down. To me, this bite pretty clearly sounds like the big buy also happened in this timeline. So if the crying child's name is truly Dave, this would then mean that William was literally using his dead son's name to disguise himself. That's, That's insane. Good. That's good. If you believe that Mike is under the alias of Fritz in FNAF 2, being fired for the same reasons as Mike in FNAF 1, and that he's indeed the guard at the time, then that's another Afton who uses a dead person's name as their Elias. Like father, like son. That's, that's really good. That's, I like that. That is good parallelism. That is a good, um, almost metaphor for the series. I, I really really like where you're going with this. I didn't think there was there was much else, th there were many other places to go, but that's actually a good, good point that he used his dead son's name in the books. And the reason I think that's also really good is because there is a parallelism there also a little bit to security breach. And I know I, I, people are gonna cringe at this and that's completely fine. You can cringe at my videos all you want. They are very cringy, but I am proud. Um, <laughs> basically, in GGY, we find out that Gregory is patient 46. He's the one that's killing the, all the therapists and etc, etc, etc. But it turns out that Gregory isn't actually evil. He was just kind of possessed by an evil. And who is this evil? Well, it is um, based on a line in the book that says the wizard's most favoured apprentice. It is, um, it's kind of implied that um, Glitchtrap is possessing Gregory in a way. And his other identity is uh, patient 46, just like Vanessa's identity is Vanny. Uh, Gregory is patient 46. Um, and so why pick Gregory? That was always the question that we had on our minds because let's face it, Gregory looks like the crying child. Maybe Gregory is the crying child. Gregory is a robot, the crying child. Whatever, Gregory's possessed by the crying child. Like, it, it could literally be anything. No, I actually think that Gregory, and I know it's very off topic, but you'll see how this comes together. I think that Gregory was chosen by Glitchtrap because it looks like Afton's son. And so you kind of have this weird symbolism here as well. So you kind of have a parallel of um, the crying child before having the name Dave, and that's kind of tied into the original trilogy. And then you also have Gregory later on, whose name almost, um, or sorry, whose like, identity is kind of you know what I mean? Um, I am going on a complete tangent here, but I, it just seems like we're having kind of a... Um, uh, the past repeats itself, or um, history repeats itself. Um, history repeats itself. That is, that is the saying, Ozone. So I really like this theory so far. Once again, I need to see where this goes, but I am really liking this. This is really good. Also, in the Tales from the Peterplex story, The Mimic, there's a kid named David, the son of someone who works on the animatronics, who just happens to oh! carry a toy everywhere he goes. To the point True. that The Mimic continued to True. mimic it even David. after his death. Look, I'm not saying True. he's a crying child stand-in, but could possibly be a narrative parallel. Also in the FNAF yeah. movie, there's a drawing of a kid named David whose mum is holding a party balloon. This being the only drawing on this wall to actually have a name for the child who drew oh it. Oh my the god. The funny thing about this is that <laughs> after I actually went ahead and did the simple thing of searching FNAF logbook Dave, I found out that I'm not actually the first person to get this answer. What? I know, I'm shocked too. I 100% <laughs> swear on everything that I got to the solution on my own and okay. literally up until this very point in the script i thought i was the only one who got dave but it turns out that it was pointed out as a possibility years ago although after the evan solution got debunked yeah people for some people reason, were like those nah. same people assumed that it meant the whole method was debunked when no it was just the final letter all yeah. in all i believe the word hidden in the foxy grid is evad which gets reflected into dave making the crying child's name dave afton or david depending if dave is a nickname like 
game theory used to do, getting some real world facts into this, <laughs> Dave was actually quite a popular name back when he would have been born. Yeah. Being charted yeah. as the third to fifth Absolutely. most popular male baby name between 1970 and 1980. It's quite a popular Dave British name David or as well. Beloved, which considering most assume Mike's whole character arc starts from the regret of killing his brother in the games and the movie goes out of its way to show how much he cares about his brother, it wouldn't make sense that he's beloved. Speaking of the movie, some people claim that the crying child's name is Garrett, which is his name in the movie. However, I don't think this is the case, mainly because Elizabeth's name was changed to Abby, Abby yeah. which is just an anagram of and a reference to baby. baby. Yeah. And despite me saying <laughs> it's a nickname for Elizabeth in my movie breakdown, it isn't actually a common nickname. No, no, no. And honestly, it's there's that one website online I'm that says that. Certain Scott did not do that intentionally. Yeah. The only reason yeah. I even thought Abby was a nickname for Elizabeth in the first place is literally because of a single website. One website. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Saying that it's a Everybody Genuinely searched that up and was like, yeah, it's a nickname. That. Also, in the same movie, William uses a different Elias, Steve Raglan. It's true. Of pre true, and actually. And Elias, Tate Miller. Even in the novel trilogy, the name of Golden Freddy's spirit is a kid named Michael. Yes, Michael. And a kid named Jeremy doesn't even exist. These are different And Cassidy isn't even they have things Golden Freddy, the right? Place. Yes, even names. So, I personally just do not think that Garrett is meant to be the crying child's real name, whether it's actually Dave like I'm suggesting or not. Now only one mystery remains. The tally marks. Seriously, what on no earth way. are these for? I do have one idea that okay. I'm personally sticking with that okay. I'll get into later after I share my past attempts at it, but being completely honest, even I'm not 100% confident in my final conclusion on that specifically. And considering it's just a bunch of fives and a single four, I really don't know how you can get anything real out of this. I've tried so many things with this code specifically that I'm going to quickly go over for you guys before I go into what I actually think it's for. So you can check off these ideas as attempted, or maybe you'll think of something I've not and add onto it. Mm. First, I attempted to use the number of the tally to get a word from the same page, or if it's a double page, the other side, which got me to you from working end, which seems quite close to being something, honestly, but it ends with end, which doesn't make much sense. Also, some have said it's actually architect instead of end, making it to you from working architect, but that's the fourth word, not the fifth. Uh... The tally on that page is five. Also tried with the first letter of the words, got nothing. Incorrect. Second, I tried to match it to how many nights Mike would have completed in all of FNAF, which only equal to about 32 nights, even if Mike is the night guard in all the games. The tally number raises to 39, however. Incorrect. Yeah. Third, I then noticed these images are actually shared between the Freddy files and the logbook, so I decided to try cross-referencing the numbers between the two books by going to the page in the Freddy files that's the same This guy is crazy, man. In the logbook and then going Crazy. to the fifth letter depending on the tally number and this literally never worked and in retrospect of course it didn't also tried with just the first letter of the words got nothing incorrect fourth i then tried literally just thinking what seemed similar between all the pages i cross-referenced or what could be confirmed by going back to them which almost <laughs> got somewhere honestly since it was the page of beware foxy whose mask mike wears in fnaf 4 which would confirm he's the foxy bully 100 percent the hallucinations mike sees in fnaf 1 possibly connecting them to the crying child in some way nightmare Fredbear again confirming Mike is the FNAF 4 player, but then it all breaks apart when the final two numbers go to Toy Slash with the Chica's gameplay page, which has no real significance to Mike, and Jeremy Fitzgerald's page. page. <laughs> Incorrect. Fifth, Man's I literally trying everything at this point. Foxy Grid to quite literally get I respect anything it. useful from those numbers by doing the page the tally was found as the X position and the tally number itself as the Y position. Oh my and God. vice versa too. Nothing worked. Incorrect. Okay. And quite honestly, the attempts ended there because I really don't see where these tallies are meant to go. I did think after trying all these attempts, however, that maybe it's a whole lot simpler than we all think. I remembered that all of the tallies put together equal to 39, and I've come to the conclusion, despite how it may be disappointing to some, that the whole point of them may have actually been to lead us back to page 39 itself, thinking we'll get a secret, which would then lead you to realize, oh wait, there's actually two page 39s here, and then you'd begin the Cassidy search. This seems like a cop out though, right? Well, do remember that the search for Cassidy only started due to the ABC found on the Foxy Grid, which also remember, didn't even end up being used for Cassidy's name at all anyways, meaning there'd have to be another way to get a hint that we're meant to investigate these random numbers to get a whole other name that's got nothing to do with the Foxy Grid and the solution for that. Also notice how this page 39 happens to be the page which features the gravestone with my name on it, connecting to the fifth kid instead of the crying child, which also happens to be the first mention in the logbook that we're searching for their name too, and also okay. happens to be about moving forward instead of reflecting back like we're told all throughout this book. 
further showing it's different to the other name. If the tally equal to anything else but 39, I wouldn't believe this for a second. Like, yeah. you probably don't. But since literally all of the tallies are groups of five besides a single one, just to make the number 39 instead of 40, honestly makes me think this conclusion isn't too far-fetched. Also, with that in mind... That's... That is a freaking brilliant point. That is a really good point, okay? Think about it, guys. Think about it. If there was some weird code going on with tallies, um, surely there would be like a two and a five and then maybe a three and a three and a six or something like that. Surely it wouldn't be five, 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 four. And I think that the reason it's five, 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 four is because you have to add them all up. And it doesn't really make... Oh, okay, the reason it's all fives is because um, tallies come in groups of fives. And when you put them all together, you can easily, easily count it in a way. So I think that that is what Scott was trying to do, almost, is that you count these tallies in groups of fives, and then you get to 39, and then you go to page 39, and then that's where the hunt begins. I, I think that's a great point about with the fives. I didn't even know that. I, I genuinely thought there were different number tallies on different pages. Um, but now that you say that, now that you say there's only one number four, and, and all of them are fives, uh, it, it doesn't make sense that you have to kind of put them all in a group, add them up, get 39, go to that page. Wow. <laughs> Scott Cawthon must have thought we were psychological masters. Um, masters of problem solving. It, it is crazy to me that the FNAF community is so big, yet Scott Cawthon has somehow managed to make a security logbook which has taken so long for us to solve. Um, there are still things in it that we just don't understand, but I, I think that um, Hyperdroid is doing a really good job here, actually. I, I think that that Foxy Grid makes sense. I think that the name Dave makes sense, especially with the mirror evidence. And I think that these tally marks, uh, although very unsatisfying and like a little bit anticlimactic, I, I think that that also makes sense. Um, so, wow, I, I think this is a golden theory, to be honest. Um, there are there are two minutes left, so I'm just going to play the rest of the rest of the video. And notice how there's only seven sets of the five tallies, and Cassidy's name happens to be seven letters long. So maybe, just maybe, mm. the tallies were actually the real way we were meant to notice that some of the numbers had actual significance, being how we were meant to start the hunt for Wait. her name specifically. This would then unfortunately mean that the two hardest puzzles in FNAF history were actually quite simple instead. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, you're onto something. I get it. I get it. I get it. I solved something else. Okay. So what you just said, so seven sets of five and a four. Seven sets of five and a four. Cassidy's name is seven letters long. Crying Child's name is four letters long. Does that not make so much sense? Every, for every group of five tallies represents Cassidy Every group, every one tally uh, that isn't in a group of five represents crown child. Blah! Okay, we are we are getting somewhere with this. I think I think that that makes a lot of logical sense. To be honest, I think that that I don't think you can get better than that. Or at least I think that is the most cohesive theory that I've heard for this. And I think that that is. That's really big. I think that's really big. And congratulations to Hyperdroid for solving that. I mean, obviously, um, people got the name Dave uh, a while ago, as he said, but like Hyperdroid actually presenting it in, in a nice format and uh, and actually finding it himself, of course, and um, and putting it all together, it, 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 it just it makes sense. And it's it's really good. So congratulations on that. Sorry, I said I'd finish the video. Let, let's do that now. <laughs> Just connecting the final crying child answer to a Cassidy question for the final letter, like the rest were already doing, and simply reversing it for the crying child's name like it hints to do, and then the tallies being how we figured out we could get Cassidy's name via the other random numbers in the book. Just like yeah. the one it redirects us to. Oh my god. Also, because besides that, honestly, assumption, I really don't know what else the tallies could be for, nor what they'd even reveal. Who knows, one day I might come back with I solved for now. I genuinely think we've solved Again, the tallies now. I now, think that's it. We have it. My solution and theory, please remember this is just a theory, to the Foxy Grid and therefore Crying Child's name, Dave Afton. With the tally marks possibly being the real incentive... I, I prefer David. ...we skipped in favour of the <laughs> Foxy okay. Grid to start the Cassidy search and for us to start taking note of the weird numbers throughout. But what do you think of all of this? Will 
will you be calling the crying child Dave Afton from now on? Or do you disagree with me and I've found something that disproves my solution? <laughs> Either way, I hope you all enjoyed and at least had some fun learning about this rabbit hole that I've been going down with this. I hope this starts some discussion about the logbook again, especially those talents. Yeah, I Instead love the logbook, man. There needs to be a second forever. one. And please prepare yourself for the biggest FNAF video I've ever made that is over 24 <laughs> hours long and is for the entire community. It's going to be another year before this comes <laughs> out. <laughs> I want to refresh your memory on things. <laughs> FNAF The Supreme Guide, officially releasing in a few weeks, depending on when this video releases. I have no I'm idea sure you said that this. like six when months ago. Out, <laughs> no shade, no shade. Can because I've spent a whole year on this thing. Let me know what you think about all of this. I'm I excited for it. Have a great day or night. Please remain positive in this community, even if people disagree with your theories or whatever. And I'll see you all soon. <laughs> Bye. Okay, thank you so much, Hyperjoid, for that. That was delightful. I actually had a blast with that. That was one of the most pleasant 20 minutes of my life. Um, you, if you want to, you, you can put that in your branding. You can you can put Ozone said this. The, the most pleasant 20 minutes of my life. Um, so, what have we learned from this? Absolutely, I, I think that Hyperjoid is correct in, in his solution. Um, will I be calling the crying child Dave Afton from now on? No. <laughs> um, so the reason, the reason, it's, it's a tricky one, right? The reason for that, um, is because it's a lot easier and, and the community have kind of come together and said, you know, this, this character's name is the crying child, the bite victim. Yeah. It, it just feels weird kind of using a theory to find a name and then using that name whenever you do more theorizing it, it kind of makes theories based on theories based on theories whereas we know for sure like 100 percent that cassidy is the fifth victim in the missing children's incident there's no doubt about that um and and something that hyperdroid didn't actually mention is it is is very key here actually that that i think is it's it's pretty big by itself is that the fact that we've got a different name for the crying child than we do for, I mean, like other characters such as Cassidy means that they're not the same. <laughs> the amount of times that I've heard that Cassidy is the crying child um, and this character is the crying child and this character could be the crying child, whatever. Absolutely not. Uh, I, I really like that we that we now have basically confirmation of that. This is crazy. This is so crazy. Um, anyway, I I am going to leave it there. Once again, thank you to Hyperdroid for making this video. I am very, very impressed. And again, congratulations. <laughs> uh, it seems like it's doing very well. I can see all the numbers, uh, the view numbers going up per the minute. Um, so yeah, congrats. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.